Aisha narrates that the Prophet ﷺ, before the revelation began, he began to seclude himself in the Ghar of Hira. Around this time, other things also started to happen that he himself told us about many years later. In a hadith in Sahih Muslim, he said that before the revelation came to me, I began to hear the rocks and stones greet me in my path. I would hear the rocks and stones saying salam to me. And there was a particular rock that always gave salam to me. And I recognize it to this day in Mecca. I know exactly which rock that was. Also around this time, the Prophet ﷺ began having every single night, he began having a dream about what would happen the next day. He mentioned this to Khadija, that, oh Khadija, I'm seeing dreams. And every time I see a dream, it comes true the next day. And Khadija consoled him and said that this is a good sign from Allah. And it is mentioned in Bukhari as well, that this period of dreams, it lasted six full months. Hadith in Sahih Muslim says that when somebody asked him, why do you fast on Mondays, Ya Rasulullah? So the Prophet ﷺ said, on a Monday I was born. And on a Monday the revelation began. So the revelation began in the last 10 days of Ramadan on a Monday. And that day marks for us Laylatul Qadr. And as I said, there are some riwayat that the Saturday and Sunday, he heard something, he saw something, but he could not physically see any being there. Then on Monday occurs the famous incident that all of us know, we tell it to our children, that when he was sitting in Ghar Hira, the Malak, the angel came to him and told him, Iqra. So the Prophet said, Ma ana biqari. And so Jibreel took him and squeezed him so tight, the Prophet said, Hatta balagh min al jad. Yani I lost all energy. Then he let me go again. And then he said to me again, Iqra. So I said again, Ma ana biqari. So for the second time, he squeezed me so tight that I thought that I wouldn't last until he let go of me. And then the third time he said, Iqra bismi rabbik alladhi khalaq, khalaq al-insana min alaq, Iqra wa rabbuka al-akram, alladhi allama bil qalam, allama al-insana ma lam ya'lam. As for the revelation itself, of course, Iqra has two meanings to it. The first meaning of Iqra is to read from a paper. And the second meaning of Iqra is to recite from memory. So when Jibreel told him Iqra, the Prophet ﷺ understood to read from a paper. So he responded back, Ma ana biqari. I don't know how to read. And so again he tells him, recite. And so the Prophet ﷺ only understands reading. So he goes, I don't know how to read. So for the third time when he says this, now Jibreel tells him, I'm not asking you to read from a paper. No. Iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq. Your recitation will come directly from Allah, not from a paper. Your recitation will be in the name of Allah and with the blessings of Allah and communicating with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet ﷺ returned back to Khadija. He ran back to Khadija. His heart was palpitating. And he entered in upon Khadija and he says to her, Zammiluni, Zammiluni. Cover me up, cover me up. So he is terrified. His heart is palpitating. And when you are that nervous and that anxious, you get cold. And of course, Khadija covers him up because you're trembling, you're scared. Until finally he calmed down. And when she calms him down, now he tells her the story. That such and such happened to me and I am worried for myself. This is the phrase in Bukhari. I am scared for myself. So the Khadija responded to him, Kalla wallahi ma Allahu abada. The famous statement of Khadija. That no, by Allah, there's no reason for you to be scared. No, by Allah, Allah will never humiliate you. Allah will never do anything to cause you harm. Innaka latasilu rahim. You are good to your kin. You're good to your family. And you take on the burdens of other people. And you give money to those who have nothing. And you are hospitable to the guest. And you do all types of good. There's nothing for you to be worried about. Because you are such a righteous man that our Lord will never cause you to suffer or be humiliated. And according to uh, one book, Khadija immediately went, this is not the famous one that you're aware of, that she immediately went to Addas. And Addas was a Christian slave of one of the uncles of the Prophet. Khadija first went to him and asked him if he was familiar with what is going on, because this is not something they are used to. And when he was told of this, he said, what the angel of God or the angel of Allah in this heathen place of idols of Mecca? How is this possible? Then according to the word report in Bukhari, she goes to Waraqa ibn Nawfal, right? So Waraqa ibn Nawfal is of course Khadija's older cousin. It is my humble interpretation and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best that 
Waraka embraced a type of Judeo-Christianity. He's not a pure Christian or a pure Jew. He's simply somebody who understands that these were all prophets of Allah. And he accepts them and he knows their scripture. And he is knowledgeable and he's at this time blind. He's on, on the verge of death. And so, as you all know, Khadija takes him to Waraka ibn Nawfal and he asks, she asks Waraka, what do you think? After the Prophet describes the story, Waraka becomes enthusiastic. He becomes agitated. He becomes eager. And he says that, Wallahi, this is the same keeper of secrets. And he calls him an namus which is the keeper of secrets. This is the holiest of holy. This is the, the major angel that came down to Musa. How I wish I were a young man rather than an old man. So that I could help you when your nation ridicules you. And your nation persecutes you. And your nation expels you. When he said, and your nation expels you. The Prophet couldn't keep quiet. And he says, my nation will expel me? And Waraka says, yes, because never has any prophet been sent except that his people ridiculed him and persecuted him and expelled him. And you're not going to be any different. And Aisha says that he only lived a short time until he passed away. And later on, some of the relatives of Waraka asked the Prophet ﷺ, what is the fate of Waraka? And the Prophet ﷺ said that he saw Waraka wearing white robes and having been blessed with gardens in Jannah. The Prophet ﷺ went on in telling his story because he's the one narrating. And then he says that the Wahi seized, the Wahi stopped to come. I didn't see Jibreel for a while. Ibn Abbas says that for many days, the Prophet ﷺ would wander around Mecca and the valleys of Mecca and the mountains of Mecca wanting to see Jibreel again. A few months, Jibreel did not come. And so the Prophet ﷺ is resumed a little bit back to normal. And then the Prophet ﷺ is narrating, this hadith is also in Bukhari, that when I was just walking about my way, I saw or I heard a sound, Samirtu Sultan. And I looked up in the heavens and I saw the same angel that had come to me in Hira, sitting on a throne or sitting on a kursi that was in the heavens and the earth. And once again, I trembled and I began to palpitate. And I rushed back to Khadija again, saying, Zambiluni, Zambiluni. And that was when Jibreel came and revealed the second revelation, the seven verses of Surah Al-Muddathir. Ya ayyuha al-Muddathir, O you who is wrapped up in garments, O you who's covered up in a cloak, Qum fa'andir, stand up and warn with Iqra, they say he became a Nabi. With Qum Fa'andir, they say he became a Rasul. 